Hello, in this video we'll have a look on how to get started with app pages in SharePoint Online. So how can we create a single part app page in SharePoint Online and expose that to be available for end users when they're creating new pages. So let's start this by creating us a solution. And in this case, we're not gonna actually uh, take an existing web part, which would be possible as well, and then expose that existing web part as a single part app page. But let's start with a clean uh, table. So let me actually clear this one and let's actually create a, a, a folder for us. Um, let's call this a, a single, single part and let's go to the, that folder as well. So first things first, we also need to create our project. So let's actually execute uh, the selections. There's certain things to consider here as well. So let's let's start uh, the Yeoman generator and talk about these options uh, in a second as well. Now, obviously it's gonna ask the default uh, basic questions. Yes, a single part is completely fine as a solution. Uh, we are targeting on SharePoint Online because uh, the single part app pages capability is only available at least currently in SharePoint Online. Uh, this is gonna be in a current folder because I'm already in the solution folder. And this one is an interesting. So do you want to allow tenant admin the choice of being able to deploy a solution to all sites immediately without running any feature deployments and all of that? So <clears throat> the default answer here is obvious in this case would be yes. And that means that whenever we install this web part solution, uh, to the app catalog, uh, and if it contains any single part web, uh, single part app pages, it will mean that uh, those will be immediately available across the whole tenant uh, when persons and people and users are creating new pages. So that's that's one thing to be ab absolutely aware of those things. So let's uh, say yes to that one. We're not going to actually uh, have any uh, API permission, so that's fine. And let's create a web part. So when you create actually single part app pages or app pages, they are actually web parts. So you can consider a web part as an app page. It's being just exposed in a different way, almost like Microsoft Teams tab development as a one option for web part, uh, let's say presentation, the single part app page or an app page uh, presentation is a one option for a web part as well. So let's let's see what that means in practice uh, as we create the solution, deploy that to the uh, tenant as well. So let's call this uh, my call uh, uh, single, uh, single, single part page. Uh, and some sort of a description doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm not going to actually do any code. <clears throat> so we're not going to care if it's a React or Knockout or non JavaScript based. So we're going to use the non JavaScript based just to create the actual web part or the solution to be available. And let's speed up the video at this point so we can continue when the scaffolding is completed. And there we go, now the scaffolding has been uh, completed and we can actually have a look on the solution. We'll need to adjust the solution slightly or the web part settings uh, to make it exposed as a single part app page in the solution. So typical setup uh, related on the uh, 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 related on the solution structure, so nothing special obviously there. Uh, we created a web part solution, uh, so we have a web part, my cool single part uh, page uh, here, and to be able to expose this web part as a single part app page, we need to adjust this supported host section. So, so this is the same setting which we adjust to say that this web part is actually a Teams tab, but in this case we're adding here a SharePoint full page uh, as the option. So if I do a comma here uh, and we can see the different options available. Right now, we support three different options to be exposed. Uh, the web part, so web part can be a SharePoint web part. It can be exposed as a SharePoint full page and it can be exposed as a Teams tabs. And you can absolutely have multiple of these choices as well. So now let's actually expose this as a SharePoint full page. Let's do a save and let's actually not do any modifications, anything else than that. And let's see how it is exposed in the SharePoint site. So let me uh, immediately do now the Gulp uh, bundle, that's the ship. So I'm getting uh, everything ready to get deployed. Now that we already updated the setting that this web part will be exposed to say a page. So I'm gonna bundle the solution. I'm gonna deploy the solution eventually uh, in a second to my tenant and then we can use the new page layout picker uh, to actually see this one in practice. But uh, give me one second as the, the Gallup tasks are running and the web, the web pack is now bundling uh, the solution. And then we have a relatively fast command which was Gallup uh, package uh, solution and that's that ship. And that's gonna then create the SPP uh, KG file, 
which is actually the solution file, which is then containing all of the JavaScript and all of the other settings and so that everything is automatically hosted by SharePoint. So now there's my solution. Uh, solution has been created. So let me actually uh, open my file explorer in that folder. And then we actually go to the SharePoint and solution. And there is my solution. So now this one is the one which I can technically send to somebody an email and they will able to then host uh, that web part in their tenant. So in my case, though, uh, we wanted to uh, use my example tenant to test this functionality. So first of all, uh, starting from uh, mid-April, uh, you are going to see this new page layout functionality getting gradually rolled out. So what you can do is save any web part, any uh, modern page as a template. And then the templates will be exposed for other users in a site. So by default, there's three different uh, templates uh, from which you can pick. And then that creates a site with an example content like that one or example uh, structures and all of that. Or you can create additional set of your own templates. Now, in here, we have this new uh, apps tab, which is available if there are any single part app pages. So but bear with me. Let's actually get our stuff first deployed and then we'll make sure that it is actually exposed properly on that tab as well and, and then walk through the, the full end-to-end -end scenario there. So what we want to do is that we want to go to the app catalog. Uh, in my case, I have quite a few solutions available here. I'm going to actually track and drop that SPP KG file uh, in the app catalog uh, library, which is then getting that to be installed. And uh, we did set the setting that this web part would be immediately available across the tenant. Technically, you would be able to get the same behavior to work by uh, deploying the, the solution only to the, let's say, a new site. Um, and then that would mean that uh, only in that site, you can create pages based on that page layout. Uh, sorry, single part app pages instances being able to create on a specific uh, site. So technically, that is a possible. Uh, it is an option available for you as well for the solution design. In my case, I want this single part app page to be available across the whole tenant immediately. So I'm going to do the checkboxing on there and deploy. And that's it. Now, in this case, now we have a new capability available in the single part app page selection. So let me refresh uh, the page just in case, making sure that uh, everything is refreshing on those speakers. Let me go again to the new and choose a page. And in here, I can actually see apps uh, tab. So if you didn't uh, didn't see the app, app tab, uh, or if you do not see the apps tabs in your tenant, uh, it means that you haven't actually you do not have any uh, uh, single part app pages installed in your catalog. So immediately when you install something in your catalog, uh, it is then being exposed through the apps tab in this page picker. So here we go. Now we can see our uh, cool single part app page, uh, and we have some uh, initial values on there. And we can then create a page based on this single part app page uh, definition. Now, obviously, we need to have a, a name for the page, my page name. And depending on our settings, we can absolutely configure the setting, configure the page as well. So configure my instance on uh, my single page uh, app single page app. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Let's actually uh, save that one and save the settings. Uh, we are actually now already, we are in the configuration mode right now. So now if we go back and request this page without the configuration mode, we can actually see the, the experience uh, for the end users and only for those people who have the sufficient permissions, they're able to modify the settings of the page. And this modification experience, you can actually adjust this uh, in the manifest file as well. So you're able to say that my web part is not configurable. So therefore, uh, you cannot actually configure the instance uh, in here. But that's uh, that's basically the experience. So let me go back in uh, back in the front page. Uh, let me create a new uh, page from here. Again, we can see those uh, page templates to be available. I can go to the apps. I can select the personal email, and you can actually see that the personal email selection uh, or personal email has a specific image uh, exposed in the UI as well. So for my cool single part app page, I didn't do that. Uh, for this one, we have actually previously already set the image which should be presented, and that can be done by using the icon image URL attribute 
in the in the web part manifest all of this is obviously uh, documented or will improve the documentation gradually after the video is also getting out so let me create a new page related on my personal emails and here we go uh, there's my personal emails uh, page uh, this one is supporting uh, uh, editing experience so that's the reason why again the left uh, side the right side panel is actually showing up so let's call this uh, personal email and let's do 10 uh, 10 messages to be shown and click save and there we go now we actually have a page which is uh, a, technically a one web part you own the experience and then you're able to render whatever you want in here and only those people who have the sufficient permissions can edit the page or you can remove the editing experience uh, completely and, and potentially even provide your own editing experience if you prefer to do so not necessarily recommended but uh, definitely an option as well um, and if you're wondering can i get rid of the header section in here you can absolutely uh, reduce the header size so you're able to go to the header and do a compact and that will reduce the header size but right now it is not supported to completely get rid of the header section and header uh, settings uh, in these pages uh, so that people do not get lost on where they are in the SharePoint experience. So that is not supported at the moment as we are recording this video. And it's now mid April, 2019. But please give us feedback on your requirements and on your business requirements related on what you would like to see in this area as well. But that's it for now. So uh, my personal emails is a single uh, part app page or a, a single page app page in a SharePoint. Uh, you can see that web part being actually rendered here or I could be able to obviously save the, the pages for my custom web part as well. And the only thing what we needed to do uh, for the solution was to decide that is where will be this web part exposed. And we've set it up to be exposed as a SharePoint full page application. And that then meant that it's available for selection in the page layout uh, selection functionality. But that's it for this video. So thank you for watching. Thank you.